Hey guys, Jason here again with another episode of Every Corner, and today we're in Another Man's Treasure Sex Tape Volume 1, which is a mixtape by upcoming hip hop artist Big Bad Barragon, which was released on April 17, 2013, is Barragon's debut mixtape. A little bit of background information on Barragon Barragon is a 20 year old East Coast rapper from New York State. Um, his love of hip hop and, and rap really started at a young age as he would listen to a friend's copy of Eminem's Slim Shady LP on the bus ride home from school because his parents wouldn't allow him to listen to that type of music. Um, that's an interesting backstory to tell nowadays. Um, some of Barragon's musical influ influences include Ghostface Killa, Big Daddy Kane, MF Doom, Cool G Rap, which is fe who was featured on this album, um, the Notorious B.I.G., um, Kanye West, Al Green, um, James Brown, and Blink-182, who was sampled on the song Angie. Um, I'll get to that in a while. All right, some, uh, back, some background information on this album it is actually a it is actually two EPs put together to combine into one mixtape. The first half of the tape is an older, heavier, um, early hip hop um, vibe and feel, which Barry Gunn really prefers. While the second half is comprised of more modern um, sounds and influences. Um, there's the production is another thing I noticed as well. Most of the production on the on the mixtape is original. Only four of the sixteen tracks contain instrumentals that are pre-recorded, which is amazing to think about nowadays, especially because everything, you know, is computer generated, everything is there um, on hand when you need it. Um, also, there is an album sampling technique used on this mixtape to create a modern um, modern and 1990s feel. Um, that means an early hip-hop inspired feel, rather than using the bass-heavy electronic sounds that we hear today, they can get rather annoying at times. Alright, the title of this tape comes from the phrase, One one Man's Trash and Another Man's Treasure, which seems to go well with the album's concept of really redoing old songs. Um, not, that there, not that there's covers, because there's not on this mixtape, but the songs are considered trash, and bringing them back to a new life, a new sound, and just bringing back that retro sound. Um, the sex tape portion of the title, if you guys were wondering, as I had mentioned before, um, comes from when Barragon jokingly said, I'm going to call my mixtape a sex tape because no one's really going to fuck with it. No one's going to want to fuck with it, rather. Um, and just really, this just brings Barragon's humor aside out, and this is seen a lot on this, on this tape um, throughout the whole thing, and I'll kind of bring it up through my track by track review as we get going. Right, let's just get going here right now. The first track here is the intro. This track really does, does a good job of of revealing what the meaning and what of the title is another man's trash another man's trash another man's treasure basically make the best out of out of any situation that you have that's what Barragon's trying to do and I think he's doing a pretty good job at it so far on this album alright so the second track here is Poppy Balboa um, on this track Barragon uses his fight and desire to get what he wants in life as, as far as as well as his love of the Rocky movies as inspiration. On um, the backing beat, which is an adapted version of the Rocky instrumental theme, really seems to set the tone and really I really enjoyed that. Notice that right off the bat, especially during the chorus, when the beat gets heavy, heavier and louder um, to support Barragon's catchy, aggressive verses. Our third track here is Call from y YL. It's really a skit, but it kind of leads you into the fourth track. Um, and I'm, I'll kind of explain what the skit is. The skit is where Barragon wakes up one day and he's of course a twenty year old um, you know, kid basically and is he has to go to school and he's late for school and he just doesn't want to go anymore. He just wants to give up and be on in the rap and just you know, be a rapper and doesn't have time for anything anymore because of school. And, you know, he, he ends up going to school. But it kinda of leads you into the four track, I I wanna be a rapper. And this is where Barragon's true passion for rapping can be heard on this track as he uses laid back West Coast inspired rapping style over a simple beat and catchy sing along chorus. I mean you will have this chorus in your head for days I wanna say. Um I I, I still do. I listened to this two days ago, I still have it in my head. Um he ba he basically boldly tells his mom that he that he's quitting school and is and is dedicated to rapping and just wants to live the lifestyle. He also tells his par tells his pastor that his weekly Bible sermons, uh, sermons about the Bible rather, will not defer him from following his dreams, which I think is a sm is a smart move for him. Because if that were the case, he would not be a rapper. Let's just face it. Um, and you know, it's it just, it's really good to see that there. Um, all right, the fifth track here is Angie. Um, this track can only be described. And it's going to be confusing. 
is a retro sounding modern hip hop love song and basically I say that because half it has the retro feel half it has the modern feel and really on this track we learned about about Angie um, Berrigan's love interest by way of a conversation between Berrigan and one of his friends in which he details his his interest in Angie and just says what he likes about her and whatnot um, through some slow paced simple yet cleverly written lyrics um, that, that that's the retro feel and then the modern feel it seems to switch tempo almost immediately um, during the during the vo during the verses rather with an upbeat backbeat that seems to be seems to be a sample of blink 182's miss you as I was saying before as well as just a breakdown that's this really really amazing it's one of my favorite portions off this mixtape in which Barragon maybe mentions other bands and such as the Beatles Fleet Foxes and Green Days green days of the world that may have influenced him as a musician. Um, finally, then the track ends with Berrigan boldly, boldly asking Angie to marry him and just he just has true feelings for Angie and this can definitely be seen on this tape, um, especially with these with these f f tracks 5 and 6. Uh, the the sixth track here, Romeo and Juliet, kind of ties into Angie and kind of gives us a deeper look into you know his appreciation for her. It's a slow-paced track that continues again with the love theme that, ex that as Berrigan expresses his love and appreciation for Angie, and how you know, and how lucky he is to have her in his life. He does this by rapping, rapping his feelings about how he feels when they're together, and just raps raps about how he will treat her right, and not physically but emotionally, which is something that I think, in a way, is trying to get rid of that sexual stereotype of women in the hip-hop community. A lot of songs nowadays, um, you know, are bubblegum hip-hop. The guys look for hits, and they will talk and refer to women maybe as sexual stereotypes. And he's trying to get rid of that. And I think he's doing a pretty good job if you if you were to listen to the rest of, the tra rest of this mixtape. Uh, the seventh track here is Call From Mandy. This skit features Berrigan talking to one of his friends about her thoughts on the previous tracks, Angie and Romeo and Juliet. And basically, the funniest part of this of this tape, maybe this whole of the of the song rather in the whole tape, would maybe be her response to how to, when she asked him how you know when when he asked her how she's doing rather. She says, he says, oh, what have you been up to? And then she says, oh, just watching porn, you know, and whatever. His reaction is just another added element of humor. It's something that he enjoys putting in there. It's just his style. I think it plays off very good. It got me, it got me laughing for quite a while. All right, the A track here is so good. It's an upbeat, faster-paced song, a feel-good song um, that, that I feel is kind of experimental. It has a fun vibe to it that really caught my attention um, to the point where I think it could even be played on the radio if, if caught at the right time. I think Berrigan will eventually be played on the radio. Um, this experimental feel to this track can be seen really all over the track with its different beat selection from the rest of the tape. It kind of gives the song, gives the song a swing vibe, a dancey vibe, if you will, from Berrigan's vocals, which seem to be kind of down to earth, kind of fun, kind of a singing rap style going on. Ghostface Killer kind of maybe a little bit. That seem to go with the fun message, I guess. You know, you know, you only live once. I guess is what he's trying to say with this by basically saying. He's trying to infer the hit it and quit it method, which basically you have a one night stand instead of a relationship. Which, as I said, as I just said, Berrigan is an emotional guy, and he he likes the emotions, as we saw in Romeo and Juliet. But he's just trying something different, trying a different style. Um, all right, the nine track here is is deep cover eight one or eight four five mix rather. Um, basically, with this track, if you're listening to this and wondering what makes Berrigan different. Then this is a track you want to listen to. Right from the start, Berrigan has a non-stop vocal assault and lyrical assault really, really fast. It almost from the start after the slow kind of introduction where it's just him, the beat, which he's timed perfectly with, and just these lyrics. And he kind of reminds me of Eminem with Rap God. And it just that in itself, it's, it actually the beat is beat is by Dr. Dre, rather. Um, but... It is something that's going to impress you, no matter what you feel about Barragon and what you feel about this tape. I think it will impress you. 
part of the nine track here is Pink Matter Interlude. It's a Pink Matter by Frank Ocean. This is really a skit that that takes a break from the heavy um, style used on Deep Cover to add a little bit of humor again. It sees Barragon's friend attempting to make an R&B tape and kind of a spoof of this um, of Frank Ocean under the name Frank Lotion. It's just another added humor. He just says, "Oh, you can't do this. You know, you you suck and whatnot." It's just something different, and I think it's again added humor that breaks up the tape. All right, the eleven track here is eight four five in Newburgh. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Um, this heart, it's a heartfelt song which samples the beat from Drake's song Five A.M. in Toronto. It features some tough, po po really poetic and truthful lyrics that that not only give the give the listener a peek into Barragan's life, but as he talk about his crew, the Big Heart fam, who, which you can find on YouTube, I'll put the link below, but will also make you wonder about Barragan's upbringing. I mean, he sounds very angry, very emotional, and just hostile in this track. It just makes you wonder, man, what did he go through? What did he have to deal with when he talks about guns and whatnot in his upbringing? It's crazy to think about it. I'd be interested to see Barragan's um, life story if he were to ever, you know, want to expose, want to bring that out in public, maybe once he hits some prime time, like I said, I think he will. All right, the twelfth track here is "Call from Vicky." Um, this skit sees Barragan again talking to one of his friends about the set of tracks that he just sent them, as well. It's kind of an introduction to the next song, "Chill with Me," um, which is for the ladies, and that will lead me into the into the track "Chill with Ladies," feature, or "Chill with Me" rather, featuring R Renee Francisco. I'm sorry, I botched that. Um, there's no secret that Barragan is quite the ladies' man because he knows how to treat the women right, you know, and not physically and emotionally, um, as we saw with Romeo and Juliet. This this song is really no different. It's a fast-paced track as Barragan, who is accompanied by Ren, Ren, Rene Francisco, who really belts out some beautifully soulful lyrics. It's an she she reminds me of, it's an R and B artist there and it, it's really it's something different. Um, Barragan is reminding the male listener that they can do more for the ladies than just you know than just physically pleasuring them. They can just hang out with them, just have a good time with them. And I think it's you gotta get back to that if you're a uh, if you're a male listener. I guess that's what he's trying to say. Alright, the fourth track here is Bong. Um, this track is another one of my favorites off this tape. Um, it has a as a jumpy fun track that'll leave you just singing along. It's just got some some affectious vibe to it with its catchy lyrics, fun beat that features some samples. It seems to be from a, from ABC by the Jackson Five with Michael Jackson and whatnot with, with that family. But uh, I just really this this song is maybe my, one of my top two tracks on this tape. Um, just the fun vibe, and I'm 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 all for that fun vibe. All right, the 15 track here is outro. This track seems to be the standard shout-out track in which Barragon thanks everyone who helps him with the record. Just, just plain, seems like it at first. But then halfway through the track, if you listen to the whole thing, um, there's a pizza delivery which disrupts the recording process, which again, adds, adds a rather humorous element to the track that I think only Barragon can get away with. Um, yeah, it, it's just something very different and it's something I've never seen before. On tape. All right, uh, the 16th track here is Hustle. This is the first of the two bonus tracks you will get when you download this tape off Barragon's, off the Big Bad Barragon website. Here, I'll put the link below. This track features some clean and excellent production with an an instrumental backbeat as well as some some overall good lyrics throughout the song. Really, really good song there. I really did enjoy that. That's that's written about the about the rough times when he, during, in the frustration, rather, that Barragan had when he was an upcoming artist and is an upcoming artist. <clears throat> Excuse me. A 70 track here is Gotta Win featuring Cool G Rap. Um, this track really, will, again, um, will, will leave you amazed because Barragan shines on this track. This track has both a powerful beat and drive and tempo and good lyric flow by both Cool G Rap and Barragan because Cool G Rap is legendary. And Barragan, they, they seem to match very, very nicely, and I really enjoyed this track at the very end. A good way to end this mixtape. Alright, my favorite songs here are, are Papa, Poppy 
Poppy Bamboa, rather, Bamboa, rather, sorry. Um, I want to be a rapper. Angie, Romeo and Juliet, so good. 845 in Newburgh. Um, chill with me and Bong. Among. And got a win, of course, as I said before. Alright, my, my thoughts on this tape, I really enjoyed what Baragon did. Um, he was able to keep me interested, really, from start to finish with, because of the tape's retro feel. That's one of the three things I want to mention here. What really caught my attention as I listened to this tape it was the overall relaxed vibe. Um, Baragon has, has vocals that are built around a somewhat harsh yet laid-back style, almost West Coast-inspired, and delivery, and, and um, Biggie Smalls is definitely in there with that influence. It, with some added old school humor and flair that brings you back again to the hip hop's early days, and particularly with Biggie and Tupac. Another thing I, I enjoyed and noticed was the production. And this, <clears throat> sorry, the there are two different styles of hip hop used in this tape. Again, the first half is a heavier feel. The second half is a more modern in modern influence. I think setting the tape up in this way. Um, really favors Barragon because he's satisfying both both audience rather um, the old school and new school with the bubblegum hip hop if you will I guess I would I would I characterize that that's just my opinion but um, he's also showing his versatility as an artist and his ability as an artist to change his style which I think will benefit him benefit him in the long run all right the, the third thing I liked is that Barragon like Jed Gladstone raps about real life. Um, Jet Gladstone, of course, I reviewed his um, debut album, The Archive, earlier this year. I believe it was in March of this year. If you were interested, um, definitely check that out. You can find it on my channel. Um, but whether Baragon is rapping is using lyrically heavy rhythms on a track to describe a specific love interest with the song Angie and Chill With Me, or just a laid-back, aggressive feel on a track like you know, about the successes and failures as an upcoming artist with tracks like Poppy Bam Poppy Balboa and Gotta Win with the, with the successes and the failures which is hustle and I wanna be a rapper. Um it's just it's done in a in a in a very nice, nice way. <clears throat> Sorry. In general I think I think it's great that upcoming artists and young artists write meaning to meaningful songs that, because it gives them a human side that a lot of today's bubblegum hip hop rappers, maybe he's a little Wayne, if you will, just don't don't seem to go for. They just seem to go for the meaning, the meaningless lyrics filled with sexualization, topped off with generic beats that you can get from anywhere on the internet. Um, they, they, they just want to hit, as I think. Um, that's what all they're trying to go for. Baragon is not like that. Overall, I think Baragon's down to earth, aggressive. Um, writing and rapping style and understandable, understandably clear flow and ly lyricism um, is something that I believe a lot of people can relate to and will will leave this tape, listening to this tape, wanting more. And, and I think we'll eventually land him in the spotlight on the on those top hits as a real artist, just like Jed Gladstone. Um, I really did enjoy this tape. I feel. Again, it will land him to the top eventually. It would be interesting to see what he does and how he follows us up with in the future. I want to thank Barragon for sending me his information. And it was an honor to review this, I do a video review of this. Um, yeah, so if you guys if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe and whatnot. That's it for this review. Um, upcoming, Some upcoming reviews. In order here, we got some Lord, we got some Event Sevenfold, we got some Paul McCartney, we got some um, Queen of Stone Age, maybe some some Blue October, some Doctor Dog. I want to do. I've had that on this list for a while. Some Strokes, um, some of these Strokes, um, some Luke Bryan, who I got a request for, some Tan Vampires, maybe some Tom O'Dell, who's a great young artist as well. Some Imagine Dragons, Hailstorm, Alter Bridge with their new album Fortress. I'm in love with that album right now. Um, maybe some Moon Taxi, some Group Love, some Sleeping with Siren, Sirens, um, some Blink-182, um, Blake Shelton as well, and maybe some Darius Rucker, I haven't necessarily decided yet. Also some Eminem, I don't know if I mentioned that before. Alright guys, that's it for this review. If, please, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe and give it a like. If you are an upcoming artist, you want me to review your tape or your album, if you you know, whatnot, please get, please send me a message. I'll be happy to do that. If you have any requests, 
please leave them below or message me or whatnot. I will eventually do them. I'm pretty behind on reviews, so I have to get caught up a little bit. Thank you guys for being patient in, in these reviews. Again, thank you for Big Bad Barragon for sending me this tape. I really did enjoy it. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Avenue Corner. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.